Good morning and welcome to worship with Travelers Rest United Methodist Church. My name is Jonathan Tompkins. I'm one of the pastors here and we are so grateful that you are joining us in the worship of God today from wherever you are. I do want to point out, I hope you have been paying attention to our opening sequence to the entrance into the sanctuary. Each week, our manger scene has gotten a little more crowded, and this This week is no exception. This week, we have two new arrivals, and that is Mary and Joseph. This is the fourth Sunday of Advent, and Advent means waiting for something to come or for someone to come. And of course, we have been waiting these past four weeks for the arrival of the Christ child. And so, be looking on Christmas Eve this week for our next addition to the manger scene. I want to bring us our opening reading today, and it is from the prophet Isaiah. It is from Isaiah 40, verses 1 through 5. Hear now the reading of God's holy word. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak compassionately to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her compulsory service has ended that her penalty has been paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice is crying out, clear the Lord's way in the desert. Make a level highway in the wilderness for our God. Every valley will be raised up and every mountain and hill will be flattened. Uneven ground will become level and rough terrain, a valley plain. The Lord's glory will appear, and all humanity will see it together. The Lord's mouth has commanded it. Let us worship together.
Friends, welcome again, and allow me to lift up a few announcements for you. This week is the week of Christmas. Christmas Eve is the 24th, uh, this coming Thursday. Christmas Day, of course, is Friday. And we have a lot of ways for you to worship and engage with the life of our congregation. So here's how you can do that. First, I want to remind you today, the 20th, is a due date for two separate things. First, if you want to help us knock holes in the darkness this coming Christmas Eve service, we want you to video yourself lighting a candle, and we want to be able to use that in Thursday's service video. And so we've been giving you information, again, in our emails, also on our social media platforms on how to do that. Basically, you, uh, you video yourself uh, with, a, with a candle, you light it off screen like that, and then you pass it off screen the other way. Uh, there's a whole how-to video online for you to do that, but please get that in by today to Chris Holm, and you will see his email address on the screen. And then another video to get to the same email address to Chris also by today is for next Sunday. It is our Christmas hymn sing. And since we can't all be together in the sanctuary singing, we still want to hear you sing. So video yourself or your family uh, singing a couple lines of your favorite Christmas hymn and also get it to Chris home by today. Also, this afternoon at 2 p.m., I'd like to invite you to join me over Zoom for cookies, cocoa, and carols. Now, you, of course, have to, have to provide your own cookies and cocoa, but I am providing the carols and several of my favorite Christmas readings along with them. So we're, I'm going to share a reading with you and then share a, uh, a modern version of a carol over YouTube, and we're going to do that all over Zoom. Again, we sent out the Zoom link this past week in both Wednesdays and Fridays emails, uh, but if you need that before 2 o'clock today, just uh, shoot me an email and uh, I can get you that Zoom link. But we'd love to see some of you today, 2 p.m. on Zoom. Tomorrow evening, Monday, December 21st, is the longest night of the year. And we have our longest night service on the longest night of the year as well. That is going to be at 6 p.m. tomorrow evening, and you can find it on Facebook Live, also on YouTube and then later on our podcast. It is a service that acknowledges the heartbreak of the year, but also offers hope and healing in the midst of that. And so we hope you join us tomorrow evening, 6 p.m. for the longest night service. On Wednesday, December 23rd, I will be going on Facebook Live off of our church Facebook page at 6 p.m. that evening for what I'm calling Christmas Suit Vespers. Uh, I'm going to be sharing some of my favorite Christmas readings, uh, but I'm going to be doing it wearing the famous Christmas suit. If you were with us last year, you know of the wager that I made that if we raised so much money for our Christmas Eve offering, I would wear the Christmas suit to worship. Well, I will be wearing that this coming Wednesday at 6 p.m. on Facebook Live as I share some readings with you, including my retelling of the Great Grape War of 84. So we'd love to see you on Facebook this coming Wednesday, 6 p.m., and I will be in the Christmas suit. And then finally, we want to encourage you to join us for Christmas Eve this coming Thursday, December 24th. There are ways all day for you to be engaged with us. Uh, first, uh, we are still looking for some volunteers to ring the bells, the Salvation Army bells, outside of the TR Walmart. And that's from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, sign up for a two-hour shift, and you can do that by contacting Gary Longest. And you can see his information on the screen. Our sanctuary will be open for prayer on Christmas Eve from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. invite you to drop by when you can. There will be Christmas music playing, uh, and you can drop by for prayer and just to enjoy the Christmas ambiance of our wonderful sanctuary. At 3 p.m. on Christmas Eve, we will have a brief, about a 10-minute 
communion service outdoors. So you can meet me underneath the, uh, the carport uh, of the sanctuary entrance. And you don't even need to bring a chair because we're not even going to have time to sit. We're just going to gather. We'll distance, uh, but gather in a circle. And we will have just a brief time of communion together. Uh, please bring your own bread and juice, or we will have the prepackaged elements available for you. But just a very brief gathering so that we can see each other and commune together on Christmas Eve. And then from 3.30 to 5 p.m. on Christmas Eve, we will be having a drive through nativity. We will be having several of our folks uh, taking part in the live nativity. This will be out on our circle uh, in the middle of our campus. And you can drive through and roll down your window and you can hear a reading from Luke's Gospel as you see the nativity taking place. Again, that's from 3.30 to 5 p.m. on Christmas Eve day. And then finally, we invite you to worship with us online at 6 p.m. on Christmas Eve. Again, that will be on Facebook and on YouTube later on our podcast. We will continue in our Among Us series with Love's Pure Light. And again, we want to encourage you to help us knock holes in the darkness by reflecting the light of Christ, by sending a video in of you lighting a candle. But also that evening, we're going to ask that during the final verse of our final hymn, Silent Night, we're going to ask all of you to step outside of your home or wherever you are with a candle and light it and sing along with us about God sending love's pure light on that first Christmas and continuing to send love's pure light to us today on Christmas. In addition to reflecting the light of Christ with your candles that evening, you can also reflect the light of Christ with your generosity. Remember that we are urging you to give a Christmas tithe to our Christmas Eve offering. We want you to take 10% of your Christmas spending and give it that night. Uh, you might be able to give more, you might be able to give less, but give something that night because we give our entire Christmas Eve offering away. And this year we're giving it, we're splitting it between giving it to United Methodist efforts to combat uh, COVID globally and also to our local uh, TRUMC pastor's discretionary fund, which helps uh, folks who come to the church in need. And so there are three different ways to give, as we always encourage you to give. Uh, you can give online, you can mail in your offering, or you can text to give. And you'll find that information later in the service today during our offertory moment. But we encourage you to reflect the light of Christ by giving generously to our Christmas Eve offering. So many ways for you to engage with the life of our church this week and for you to reflect the light of Christ. Thank you, friends, and let us continue now our worship. We come to the lighting of our Advent candle. It is the fourth Sunday of Advent. We are going to light the Advent candle for. So the McKelvin family has our liturgy for us, and then we will sing together. Happy Advent from the McKelvins to TRUMC family. Um, our custom is to read from the Advent book each night. And then each of our four kids gets to light one of the Advent candles all week for each of the four weeks in Advent. And so that's kind of how we do things here um, using our Advent wreath uh, in the center of our table. We usually sing the Advent candle song um, for our blessing at our dinners together too. So, Dave, if you'll light the fourth candle for the fourth week of Advent, that'd be awesome. Thanks, bud. So, TRUMC family, if you'll join us in our Advent candle liturgy for the fourth Sunday of Advent in 2020. Comfort, O oh comfort, my people, says your God. We wait for you again, Lord Jesus. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make a straight path and even ground for our God. We wait for you again, Lord Jesus. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. We wait for you again, Lord Jesus. As we wait, we light four candles today, four little lights to knock holes in the darkness. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot put it out. 
Amen. Amen. Happy Advent, TRUMC Happy family. Advent. gospel lesson today comes from the gospel according to John. Hear now this reading. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. In the word was life. And the life was the light for all people. Amen. Surprise! You probably were not expecting to see me on the worship video today, but that is the magic of technology. And in the spirit of transparency, yes, I am having surgery for my breast cancer on Monday, December 14th, 
but I am recording this before my surgery and you are watching it six days post surgery. So just a little peek at the reality behind the curtain, attempting to keep it real. I am hopeful that everything will go well and I am thankful to all of you for your prayers and your support and meals that you've already signed up for and Grubhub in so many ways that you have been supporting my family and me during this time. Today, December 20th, we continue our Advent sermon series called Among Us. This is based on the Gospel of John chapter 1 verse 14, the word became flesh and blood and lived among us. We have been exploring different names for Jesus, names like King, Savior, Emmanuel, and today, love. And we've been exploring how our King and Savior and Emmanuel and love came among us in Jesus Christ. The theological word that we use for that is incarnate or incarnation, and that is what happens at Christmas. In Jesus, God becomes flesh or is incarnated in Jesus. The sermon series is based on a book called Incarnation by Adam Hamilton. And today is the fourth Sunday of Advent, the last Sunday of Advent, and a four-week season of preparation before Christmas, before the birth of Christ. The liturgical color during Advent is blue that we are doing here at TRUMC, or also purple at many churches. And Advent means to come, and we know what is coming, or actually who is coming. The Christ child is coming to be born once again. Now, traditionally, each Sunday of Advent has a theme, and the order of that theme is debatable depending on the church and depending on the pastor, but the themes are hope and peace and joy and love. So it is fitting today on the fourth Sunday of Advent that today is love and that the title of the sermon is Love Came Down at Christmas. And of course, we just sang that hymn, which is number 242 in our Methodist hymnal. And we will come back to that in just a little bit. Our scripture for today is from John, the Gospel of John, chapter one, verses one to four, and then skipping to verse 14. Now, Luke tells a more traditional version of the Christmas story with Mary and the journey to Bethlehem and the shepherds. And Matthew talks more about the wise men and Joseph. And as usual, the book of John is just a little different. John writes in a more philosophy kind of style and less storyteller style. So the first chapter of John is very Trinitarian. It introduces the term, the word. And in Greek, the word is logos, a word of wisdom or a word of logic. Usually when we hear the word, we think of the Bible, the written word, but that's not really the way it's being used in John chapter one. The word with a capital W is Jesus. Jesus is the authoritative word of God. Jesus is the wisdom and the understanding, the reasoning of God. As Brian Zahn says, Jesus is what God has to, say, has to say. So let us look at the reasoning and logic in the Gospel of John chapter 1. It says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. So if the Word is Jesus... The word equals Jesus, and it says the word was God, then Jesus is God. Jesus equals God. So we can put Jesus's name in for the word, and that helps us read this verse a little differently. 
in the beginning was Jesus, and Jesus was with God, and Jesus was God. He was in the beginning with God. John's Christmas story is less about what happened and more about what it means. Jesus is God. God is Jesus. How does that work exactly? My seminary professor would say in his British accent, it is a mystery. But John chapter 1 verse 14 tells us how. The word became flesh. God became flesh and lived among us. Jesus is God in the flesh. This is no ordinary birth of a baby. This is God incarnate in Jesus who comes to dwell among us as one of us. Jesus became flesh and lived among us. God became flesh and lived among us. This is the incarnation. Now, it's sometimes called scandalous because the divine is becoming human. The abstract concept of God becomes the real and tangible person of Jesus. To me, it begs the question, why? Why would God do this? Why would God choose to humble God's self by becoming human? Why would God send God's Son? The Gospel of John answers this question in chapter 3, verse 16. The most famous verse of the Christian Bible, I'm sure you know it well. Just the first part of the verse answers the question, why? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God became flesh in Jesus because God so loved the world. Love is the reason. Love is the motive. God becomes flesh to be with us, to be like us, to understand everything that we go through, including suffering and even death, because God loves us. The divine becomes human out of love for humanity, out of love for us, out of love for you. Not only is love the motive, but taking it a step further, stay with me. We've already established that God equals Jesus. And if we look to the letter of 1 John, not the gospel, but the letter of 1 John, chapter 4, verses 7 through 11, we see that God equals love. Hear these words. Beloved let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. God is love. That is why we can say that God is good, because God's very nature is love. God does not want to punish. God isn't out to get us. God is love. I think our math folks will recognize that as the law of transitivity. Math and theology are colliding in an amazingly nerdy way. I love it. So the law of transitivity is A equals B and A equals C, therefore B equals C. In theological terms, God equals Jesus, and God equals love, therefore Jesus equals love. At Christmas, God, Jesus, comes down in the flesh. Love came down at Christmas. There is that hymn title. 
And it makes sense now that I think about it. And it just so happens that the words to this hymn were originally a poem written by Christina Rossetti based on the letter of 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 to 11 that I just read. Love came down at Christmas. Love all lovely, love divine. Love was born at Christmas. Star and angels gave the sign. Adam Hamilton says, Jesus was God's word, God's testament to his love for us. Once we receive this gift of God, this gift of Jesus, this gift of love, then we can share and spread it around with others. First John says, love one another. And there are so many different ways that we can do that. I want to lift up two this morning that we've been talking about during Advent. Two ways to spread the love that comes down at Christmas. And the first is with the reverse Advent calendar. It's not too late. There are a few days left of Advent, but you can catch up on it if you're just joining this now. You can put these food items into a box to collect food for those in need and then give that box to the North Greenville Crisis Ministry. A second way is through our Christmas Eve offering. Every year we give 100% of our Christmas Eve offering away. This year it will be split going to two different places. First to the COVID Relief Fund for the United Methodist Denomination and secondly, to our Pastor's Discretionary Fund at TRUMC, which helps people in the church and in the community when they are in financial crisis. Jesus is the first and best Christmas gift. God's gift of love, of God's self, of God's love to us. We receive this gift. We receive this love. Accept the gift of Christ and the gift of love into your heart and life and into your Christmas. Let the gift of God's love sink in deep into your soul. For you see, all of us have a hole in our heart that we spend way too much time desperately trying to fill with all the wrong things. Let the gift of God's love sink in deep into your soul. God's love is the only thing that will actually fit in that hole in your heart. Let the gift of God's love sink in deep into your soul so that you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you are lovable and that you are loved by God. When we know that in the depth of our soul, then our very lives are transformed. And God shows us again and again in Jesus the depth of God's love for us. When we receive this gift of love, it's not the type of gift that we can just put on the mantle, that we can just put on a shelf to be admired. It's a gift to be used, to be used in loving one another. It's a gift to be displayed in the way that we show that love to each other and to our community and to the world. It is a gift to be shared. It is a gift to be spread around. Once you have accepted God's gift of love in Jesus, then share it, re-gift it, Spread it around, receive this gift, and then give this gift to the world. I'll close today with the third verse of the hymn, Love Came Down at Christmas. Love shall be our token. Love be yours and love be mine. Love to God and all people. Love for plea and gift and sign. Amen. And now will you pray with me? Jesus, I trust in you. Be my love. Fill me with your love. 
Grant me your hope. Help me to walk in your love, to share your love, to live your love, to give your love. We offer these in the name of Jesus Christ, God's love in the flesh, who taught us all to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We come now to our time of offering when we who are blessed can now be a blessing for others. I want to encourage you to give through one of three ways. You can go to our website, to our e-giving portal. You can text to give, text the amount that you want to give to the number that is listed. Or you can send your offering in by the mail. I want to encourage you to continue your generosity so that we can continue the mission and the ministry of Traveler's Rest United Methodist Church in this part of God's kingdom that we call Traveler's Rest. now, if you will join me in singing the response of sending forth, which is set to the tune of Wayne a Manger, and your words will be on the screen. The day of our hearts is near dawning at last. We wake to the light which the morning stars cast. For all whom we meet shine with light from above. Shine bright with the light of Emmanuel's love. And now go in peace and spread God's love at Christmas to everyone you meet. Amen. <laughs> 